Hello, I'm Charlie Reindress and I forgot to turn my camera on. Um, I was supposed to be here when it got to zero and I was sitting here watching the countdown and forgot to turn my camera on. Anyway, hello everyone and welcome to episode three of Stompin' Tom Remembered. Um, this is a live streaming series that we're doing for about six weeks. Um, I, I am Charlie Reindress and I wrote a book about Stompin' Tom called Stompin' Tom Connors, The Myth and the Man. And I was supposed to tour Ontario doing a book tour in support of the book back last spring and then COVID hit and it got canceled. So we decided that uh, my publisher and I, Formac Publishing, decided we'd go online instead. So I created this Facebook page, which you're watching the show from. Facebook, uh, the page is called Stompin' Tom Connors, The Myth and the Man. And I post uh, some of the research I found when I was doing the book, either video clips or pictures or news articles, and tell a little bit more about the book. But then every Thursday night, Atlantic time at 8, 8, 8 p.m., 8 p.m., because I'm not awake at 8 a.m., 8 p.m. Atlantic time on every Thursday from this site, I interview someone who knew or worked with Tom, because um, there's so many great stories about Tom. And one of the... It, fun things about working on the book for me was getting to talk to so many interesting people and now I get to share some of those interviews with you. So I'm really excited. I'm I'm coming to you from my kitchen because Tom used to say to his uh, uh, when he was doing a show he used to say in case you thought you were coming to see a concert you were wrong. You were coming to a party. And Duncan Fremlin who uh, he was my first guest on this series and he toured with Tom and he said a show with Tom, I'm going to quote him, I'm reading it right now, a show with Tom was like a show in his kitchen and the people in the audience were his guests at his house. So I'm inviting you into my house, live from Amherst, Nova Scotia. You're right here in my kitchen. We even did the dishes. Um, and now we're ready to have a little interview with Dave Gunning. I'm so excited to talk to Dave tonight. Um, one of the main points of the book, and one of the reasons I called it The Myth and the Man, was the more research I did, the more I learned about Tom, the more I realized that Stompin' Tom Connors was very much a character created by a very smart man named Tom Connors. And I'm hoping that over the series, over this series, you come to, we shed a little more light on Tom Connors, the man by talking to people who knew him. So tonight, my guest is Dave Gunning. And Dave is, um, he's a singer songwriter from Nova Scotia. Here we are. He's in the Picto area of Nova Scotia. That's Dave up on the screen there. And he, uh, he's put out 13 albums. He's been a performer for over 20 years. He's a Juno nominee. He's won eight East Coast Music Awards, two Canadian Folk Music Awards. He was the winner of CBC's Hockey Night in Canada Song Quest. He co-wrote a song with Dave Francie, a song called A Game Going On. And I was reading some promo about Dave earlier, and it said his music is about the underdog, the heroes, family, and the heart. And it reflects the messaging of social justice and caring about the world around us. So he's a lot like Tom in that way. And he unabashedly writes Canadian songs, and he stayed close to home to do it. So Dave toured. I'm going to read you a tiny little bit from the book here in a second about Dave, and then we're going to bring him on. But he toured with Tom in 2002, and they were made friends until Tom's death. And uh, Tom, when Tom passed away, he had actually planned and his own memorial service and he planned that Dave would be there to Dave's surprise Dave didn't realize until after Tom had passed away but he was at Tom's memorial service and we'll talk a little bit about that too Dave's a great storyteller uh, of one of my favorite people I interviewed for the book he tells such great stories and if you see him in performance his songs are great stories but also you know what he talks about between the songs is very entertaining and he offered some of the best insights I thought into understanding Tom the man um, I've mentioned this in a couple of the previous interviews, but if you were in Tom's band, there were a lot of rules when you went on the road. Like you couldn't go anywhere without letting Tom know and you had to have a walkie-talkie with you at all times and someone had to stay up with him until six in the morning every night. And of all the people I talked to who were in Tom's band, I thought Dave seemed to have the best understanding of this. I'm going to read you just like a little paragraph from my book. Um, I'm not going to tell you too much because Dave's a better storyteller. Rather than reading it from the book, let's let him tell you. But I'm going to read you just a tiny bit. Although the band only performed about three nights a week, they were not allowed to go home between performances. And even if they visited their hometown, they couldn't go visit their family. Although these rules might have seemed unreasonable to some, Dave Gunning came to respect them and said Tom was an extremely kind person and a brilliant person. If he knew you weren't going to screw him over in any way, if you respected those rules he put in place, he reciprocated and sent, back, sent you the respect back. Gunning found this out the hard way. Uh, he has a great story to tell about how he gained Tom's respect and came to understand Tom's rules. Um, but I'm going to let him tell you about that in a minute. But first, let's just bring him on and talk to him. Here we are. Mr. Dave Gunning. Hello. Hey, hey, Charlie. Thanks so much for everything, for writing this book and 
for having me on the show tonight. Oh, I'm so happy to have you here. You were one of my favorite interviews. Um, and I, I really, I like you a lot as a singer songwriter. I, I listen to your music and I also think you, you, I love your stories. I actually, a friend of mine was in Guelph, Ontario and saw you a year and a half ago back when I was working on the book and he liked you so much, your storytelling. He was taking videos and sending them to me saying, do you know Dave Gunning? Have you interviewed him for your book? He's got such great stories. <laughs> and I reached out to wow. you after that and arranged the interview. Wow, yeah. Uh, anyway, I love, you... uh, love Ki the, the Ki Kitchener was the last, uh, or yeah, uh, uh, Guelph actually um, is near Kitchener. That was the last show we did with Tom. Was at the Riverfront River River Run Theater, and uh, we drove home home for the show that night. JP and I, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. great. Well, we have so many things yeah. to talk about. Now, I, there's a whole bunch of people saying hi and stuff like that. And I'm, not, I'm just, I see we have a ton of comments. Oh, so I'm I just going to ignore those for now. But <laughs> I don't know if you can oh, see wow, the comments. Yeah, I, but I, I see the thing where, where there's comments there. Yeah. Uh, so like someone wrote, Dave is an awesome, Carol Tambo, who I know, Dave is an awesome singer, songwriter, storyteller, and overall entertainer. <laughs> Look at this. And Dave Gunning is awesome. Um <laughs> Oh, look, we've got one more somebody who met you. Sorry, am I embarrassing you? Well, I'll stop with this in a second. We'll get to Tom. <laughs> <laughs> Alan Dalton wrote, say hi to Dave and thank you for signing mm -hmm. my guitar in Charlottetown in the summer. You're a great singer and writer and I hope to see you play again soon. So, um, And then a lot of my family's writing, so yeah. hi to them. Um, you and I yeah. actually <laughs> met. I don't know if you remember this. It was at, at the, Stomp and, the opening of the Stomp and Tom Center. I met you and JP there. Okay, yeah. Yeah, Over I do at remember Pond. Um, talking to you. Yeah, I think you gave me your card that night. I did, and yeah. I gave you a copy of my Rita McNeil book. Yeah. I put the picture up. I covered our faces for a second. Yes. That's uh, That was the lineup at the Stomp and Tom Center yeah. that day. The center's great. I could get take our pictures yeah. down, but I'm not going to bother. It's too much work. <laughs> so, and there's the Stomp your, and your, Tom Center. Your book about Rita. Your book about Rita is awesome as well. Finally, you get deeper than um, a lot of writers about about Tom certainly you you uh yeah you it's I I just thought yeah it's beautiful I haven't read the whole book yet I've just read excerpts of it but I can't re wait to read the the rest of it yeah Oh, well, thank you. Honestly, uh, that means a lot. I um, Mickey Andrews who you would have known I guess he toured with Tom like or played with Tom from the late 60s right through till Tom passed away off and on and he yeah. told me a lot, like you, gave me a lot of real insight into Tom. And uh, he said, I just want somebody to write an honest book about him. So that's what I was trying to do. <laughs> now, you, I'm going to let yeah. you talk because awesome. we have a little we have a little delay here. So I'm just going to shut up. But I want I just I love your story about how you came to work with in 2002. You so you'd already been a singer songwriter yourself for a number of years. And then in 2002, you got asked to work with Tom, right? Yeah. Uh, J.P. Cormier recommended me for the job. J.P. toured with Tom when he was younger. I think uh, maybe J.P. was 18 or 19, and Tom Gallant was the band leader on that tour. And uh, so it was J.P. and had kept in touch over the years as well, and J.P. played on some of Tom's records. Anyway, Tom was his regular band that he, that he had toured with over the years, um, some of the the guys weren't available or weren't able to do the tour for whatever reason. So JP was hired to uh, open the show and um, uh, he gave Tom my name, said that, uh, you know, call Dave Gunning. He's a, he's a great upright bass player. And um, I had never held an upright bass in my life. <laughs> and uh, so I, I, tr I actually tried to get out of the gig. I, um, when Tom called, uh, you know, he said, this is Stompin' Tom Connors calling from Ontario. I'm looking for Dave Gunning. <laughs> and I, I couldn't believe it was really him calling me. I thought it was a prank call. Yeah. And uh, I said, this is Dave. Listen, J.P. Cormier says you're a play, pretty good bass player, but I want to know if you drink. And, and then I was, I was uh, at that point, I was thinking, what kind of job interview is this? And and then he, he uh, I said, well, I'd like to have a few beers, you know. And, and he says, that's good, boy, because we're not a bunch of preachers out in the road. Now, before you get to the gig, I got to know one more thing, and it's very important. I said, what's, what's that, Tom? I need to know if you can handle your liquor. And, uh, <laughs> and I just, I was, I, I just, I couldn't believe that this was happening. And I, and at, right after that, I, I get off the phone 
And uh, my first call was to JP, and I said, Tom just called me, and he hired me to play bass on this tour. And uh, but uh, and JP JP says, awesome, you know. And then I said, well, I have my electric bass. I'll just start practicing, you know, the Tom tunes. And, and JP says, well, not on your electric, you won't. Tom, he said, let me tell you something with Tom. Tom's old fat. So I told him you'd play the upright bass for him. Uh, and I, I, I said, JP, I don't play upright bass. And... Uh, and he said, well, they're easy to play. He says, just go buy one. And so I tried to get out of the gig. I said, look, I think we better call Tom. Tom is a legend. He deserves a proper upright bass player. And JP says, don't you dare call him. He said, I wouldn't have stuck my neck out for you if I didn't know you could do it. So shut up and go buy the damn bass and don't call me till you got one. So I went down <laughs> to Halifax and I saw... Brian Mitten used to work at Music Stop down there. Everybody loves Brian. Brian makes great beer, too. We love him for that <laughs> oh. reason as well. But uh, and he's a great banjo player and just a great human. And uh, Brian was working at, at uh, the Canard Street Music Stop, and I, he he showed me a bass, and he was just laughing. You know, He says, well, you'll be able to do her. You'll be able to do her. And, and uh, so I got, I got the bass and uh, put it in the back of my van, and I was on my way home to Picto, and uh, I stopped at the Irving Big Stop, and I was to pay for my gas. And I looked on the counter, and there were maybe uh, I don't know four to six Stomp and Tom CDs, like brand new collection that had just come out with beautiful artwork and a nice nice maple leaves on it. Uh, Michael Rycraft may have done that artwork actually on the on that collection. And oh, okay. so I I I just I I didn't even look at what songs were on them. I just bought all of them because. At that point, Tom had 42 records out, and JP said, the best advice I can give you is buy a map of Ontario and every place we're going and make sure you learn all the songs about those towns because he's written a song about every single one of them. <laughs> yeah, sure, we'll be doing the regular songs like Bud the Spud and the Gumbo Clogaroo and the Good Old Hockey Game, but he's always going to throw some random new ones in there, and we're not going to know what, what they are. And sure, they're only three-chord songs. But don't let that fool you because you never know when he's going to change chords and you got to do it with him. <laughs> but he does it the same way every time. He's a bit of a mathematician. So some of the stuff you listen to Tom's music, you might think that's haphazard or a bit of an accident or, gee, there's a, a bar of 1-4 there or something weird. But it was he did it the same way every time pretty well. So wow. it, it was, uh, you know, in Tom's mind, that's how it went and that made sense to him. Anyway, so... All this was on my mind, so I just bought all these. I put all the records on the Irving Big Stop counter, and I was, uh, you know, and paying for my gas. And the the, uh, the the guy waiting on me said, "You're a big Stomp and Tom fan," and I said, "If I told you, you wouldn't believe me." So, <laughs> so, so I just, how much do I owe you? And I paid for the for the gas and the Stomp and Tom CDs, and then I went straight to the Picto Liquor Store and got a case of beer because I thought I better start rehearsing right away. And it was. Uh, <laughs> I, I I tell the story on stage, but it was more like training for the Olympics or something, you know. And I <laughs> and knowing I, I didn't want to raise a blister on the bass, so I, I would play for half an hour a night, just on the bass. Uh, dr you know, drink drink a few beers, have the Stomp and Tom cranked, and uh, that's how I rehearsed for the tour. And <laughs> well, the first night I met Tom uh, was in I think it was Brockville, Ontario, or Belleville, one of those towns, and we were starting the tour. And there was Tom in the motel room with Tommy Jr. and they were playing Scrabble, and uh, so JP and I got in this game of Scrabble, and you know, uh, and at one point Tommy Jr. and JP went outside to talk about something and left me with Tom for the first time. And there was Tom with the big hat and the cigarette, and <laughs> and just staring into my soul trying to figure me out, and I was I was getting nervous, you know, and and it you know. I, he had a way. He didn't suffer f fools, I guess, uh, as the saying goes. He was, he uh, he was trying to figure me out, you know. Right, and right. I, I was starting to get nervous, and I started nervous chatter, much like I'm doing right at this moment. <laughs> and I was, I I was, uh, I looked at him and said, Tom, man, I I can't thank you enough. This is the experience of a lifetime getting a, getting a tour with one of my heroes, and and man, I I, I this is amazing, and. Uh, now, and then I was getting more nervous, and he was just staring at me like, like even more <laughs> as I was saying this. I said, "I don't know if JP told you, but like, are we going to get a chance to run through the the tunes, or you know, because I don't know if JP told you, but I just learned to play the upright bass. I I just bought the bass a, a couple of months ago, 
and I right. realized what I had said. I, I realized that I just confessed everything, and I thought, <laughs> he, and he's staring at me even harder. He's going to fire me and send me home. And, like, I was thinking, you dumbass, a dumbass. Why, why am I, why, why am I saying this? I couldn't stop myself. And he right. looks at me and says, "What are you talking about, buddy? Why don't you relax and grab a beer or something? Don't worry about making mistakes on my show because I'll be making more than you." <laughs> that was it. <laughs> That's so great. And I there love was no that. rehearsal. So... We just p- played the shows. So there's no rehearsal. There wasn't a set list either, right? Like you didn't know exactly where he was going. Like he opened with Bud always, or usually, didn't he? And then after that, you didn't quite well, know he what op- he was going to sing he, next. He, uh, yeah, no, he opened with um, Maple Sugar, like a fiddle set that, that would bring bring oh, him on. Okay. And I I believe that the opener on the tour was Sudbury Saturday Night on the on the on the tour that we oh, okay. did. Okay, but yeah, then you it, you didn't that, know but what. But it may have the... he, he may have altered it. Maybe he started with different ones over the years but on that 2002 tour i believe that it was it was sudbury saturday night i think um but uh but i but anyway he there what he would do sometimes is during the sound check he would pick a couple of songs to run um so i remember quite clearly when we got to quebec he, he he would run he was he was he would run through a couple of french songs just to brush up on on the on those oh, ones, yeah, right, yeah, because he sang a little bit in French. Yeah, I remember you yeah, said to me, and, "I thought it." Was, sorry, go ahead. Oh no, yeah, he did, and the and you know they the Quebecers they, and you know he, he wow. like I don't speak French. Um, I wish I wish I did. Uh, but Tom's Tom's accent was, uh, you know, you could tell he had quite an accent when he spoke French. <laughs> so he probably just loved it. <laughs> he did it, you know. Yeah. That's funny. I remember you saying getting ready for the show was like um, it was like training for liver dance instead of river dance because of the beer. <laughs> well, that's what JP JP called it. Yeah, you, you know the Tom. Oh, it was JP. You okay. heard of river dance? Well, the the, the, the Tom tours is known as liver dance. So, yeah. <laughs> and I think you yeah. told me too, didn't he say something? But he didn't like fallsy downsies. He wanted to make sure you could hold your liquor. That's right. Maybe I missed that part of the story, but yeah, I want to make sure you weren't one of them fallsy downsies. He said when he asked me, about, <laughs> "Yeah, that's when he asked me if I could handle my liquor." You know, that was that was uh, Stomp and Tom. We, the next thing we need to do is put out like a Stomp and Tom dictionary, like the meanings behind all these <laughs> things. He said fallsy downsies yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, you also, you told me, and uh, some of this stuff is in the book. Some, some isn't because you and I talk quite a bit, and I, I can't put everything in. Um, but you told me about. When Tom, the, the Queen's 50th, her Golden Jubilee, Tom was, they, what they did was they had a ceremony, they had a luncheon for the Queen, and they chose 50 Canadians yep. who had made a mark on Canada's history between 1952 and 2002. Tom represented one of those years, and he was invited. But you told me the story about how he almost didn't go, um, which I think is, is quite entertaining. So I don't know if you want to talk a little about that. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's uh, one time uh, when I went to visit him at his house, just outside of Georgetown there. Um, and, uh, yeah, uh, I, I, Tom, when, when you'd call Tom, it was like calling your grandparents or something. He, he, he's, you know, I'm keeping tabs on you. Bye. I see you're going out to Alberta next week. When are you going to come <laughs> see me? And, uh, you had to have the next day off if you're going to go visit Tom. And I remember, uh, I went to visit him and, we were it was an awesome visit and uh he showed me around his house he I, he had like some nice tools did some woodworking and things like that part of, like his workshop downstairs and uh just off his he had a bar he sat at it was like being in a you know lounge or something a um nice bar with uh you know the whole setup pool table and dark boards and he ha- hired a local artist to uh paint the Skinner's Pond schoolhouse from the same angle that he used to see it out of his window in the morning when he was getting ready for school really oh I, i've I never heard that, that Skinner's before. Pond schoolhouse that's what i'd see in the morning when i woke up you know i'd look out the window and that's the angle i'd see the skinner's pond schoolhouse from uh, or and so that was cool and then at one point he took me into his office just off his bar area there and uh, it was quite a beautiful office not like kind of a small cozy like really nice desk and chair and he had uh, like a nice lamp on there. The only other thing on the desk that I remember was a typewriter. I don't remember seeing any anything else. And he said, "I do everything with that." 
and <laughs> and uh, then he opened a drawer and uh, showed me a letter. And he said, Dave, I'm, I'm one of 50 Canadians invited to meet the Queen. And uh, so he says, read this. And it was a letter from Rideau Hall inviting him to, to meet the Queen. And I said, are you going? He says, well, well, let me show you my response back to them. And he gave me another letter to read. And the, the letter basically, you know, was him respectfully declining you know, because he wears a hat, and he said, "I, you know, I understand the presence of the queen that you're required to remove your hat, and I'm not comfortable doing that, and you know, because I'm hat all the time." And uh, but thanks so much for the invitation, and I'm um, honored, and you know, sincerely yours, Tom and Tom Connors. Huh. And I said, "You're not going to go." He goes, "Well, just a second, boy. Look at, read the letter they sent back to me." <laughs> and he, there was a third letter, and the letter was from Rito Hall, and it it explained how. Um, they had contacted contacted Buckingham Palace and uh, had um, communicated with them. And, uh, you know, basically, dear Stomp and Tom, you know, please, please come as you are. The Queen is coming to Canada to meet Canadians as they are. And Stomp and Tom wears a hat. So in the presence of the Queen, please leave your hat on. You know, you're not be required to remove it. Uh, come as you are. She's looking forward to meeting everybody. And it was this beautiful letter and uh, at the somewhere at, at, at toward the end of the letter, it said to let you know how we're getting around protocol. Your hat will be considered a religious headdress for the evening's events. <laughs> and uh, Tom was so proud of that letter. And um, and uh, that weekend, I, I had flown home, and uh, I was watching the highlights on on CBC, the National, of you know from the weekend's events, and and. Uh, there was Stomp and Tom, you know, with the black hat on, meeting the Queen and going through <laughs> the line, and uh, and I, I I I just I I thought it was so beautiful. I, and then that Monday, uh, I called Tom I, early afternoon or something, and uh, I said I saw you on on CBC the the National on the highlight reel for the weekend meeting the Queen. You weren't hard to spot, you know. Just had to look for the big black hat, <laughs> and he said, "He said, yeah, it was quite a quite an event." I said it must have been pretty, uh, must have been pretty fancy, you know. Yeah, it was quite swanky, and uh, you know, I said, well, the food must have been awesome. Well, not really, no. It looked like seagull shit or some damn thing in the plate. There were these little piles of stuff everywhere, and I couldn't eat that. So, so Brian, that's that was Tom's manager, Brian Edwards. Yeah. Brian arranged for them to to make me a ham sandwich with white bread and just mustard. <laughs> and uh, that's what he ate. <laughs> and then he said, I always, uh, and Dave, uh, I always knew which tray was going to be coming to our table because it was the only one with a bottle of Moosehead Green on it. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Do you know, I actually have a picture here I'm yeah. going to put up on the screen. You can still hear us talk, but that's everybody gathered for the, for the oh, ceremony. Wow. And Tom is oh, over beautiful. on the right in a gray jacket, but I'll do a little closer one. There he is with his hat on. <laughs> wow. wow. You can see yeah, he's got that, the hat yeah. on. That's amazing. Yeah, it's it's wow. pretty it's pretty cool wow. to see all those people and there he is all proud with his hat on. Yeah. Um I actually yeah. I have a little uh, what I love there's so many funny stories about Tom, but he also one of the things that I discovered in writing the book is as much as the Stomp and Tom the character was this big loud cartoonish guy, if you hung out with Tom the guy, he was quite serious, right? Like you'd spend a lot of time just quietly talking about philosophy and religion and stuff. Anyway, I found a little clip online on YouTube of him talking about the day he met the queen. And I think it just shows his serious side so well. So I just want to show you, I was going to play that for you. And then awesome. when, when we come yeah, back, you and I will talk a little about it. I just love that. I, when I found yeah. this, I was like, it's very moving. Okay. When me and the wife, Lena, were sitting, toasting the queen, Queen Elizabeth II, on her 50th Golden Jubilee, she came to Canada, she came to Ottawa, and I was one out of 50 people who were invited to go to dine, wine and dine, whatever you call it, and toast the Queen. While I was there, I thought to myself, what the hell am I doing here? And the first thing that came to my mind was, the fans put me here. Because I could have been singing forever 
on a boxcar. I could have been singing forever in, in a hotel somewhere, long gone and forgotten. I realized I was there representing all those people who put me right there at that moment. And I bowed my head to myself and I men are not supposed to cry but I did shed a tear. Maybe nobody else in the hall knew it. That's what the Stomp and Tom fan is to me. Yeah, hmm. that's awesome. I, I just yeah. love that clip because it's just, and that's probably the Tom you knew more, right? That the rest of us don't yeah. get to know. Yeah, that's powerful. I hadn't seen that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it, it just when he, when he oh, starts no, to break it's, down. It's, it, yeah. Yeah, it's a, yeah, and, and it's funny because yeah. one of the things you and I talked about um, was that you said, uh, you know, Tom, near the end of his life, he, he, the character of Stomp and Tom was physically and mentally exhausting and he'd get tired out. And you said, so I, I'm going to quote you, you said this to me, I'm reading, uh, this is from the book, but he was almost a character of himself at times and sometime his novel, sometimes his novelty sounding songs overshadowed his incredibly well-written songs like The Bridge Came Tumbling Down or Songbird Valley. That man has written some of the greatest Canadian yeah. songs ever, and yet people still think of him as this caricature and everything he did is funny. And I, I just loved what you said yeah. there, so I used it in the book. <laughs> yeah, yeah, amazing, yeah. No, I think I remember him uh, talking about that, and uh, I think he had it in his mind that at some point he was going to write a book as Tom Connors. Um, but, uh, I mean, he was grateful for, for everything, you know, and... He he worked hard, and uh, I think I remember him saying, you know, geez, sometimes, sometimes I'm getting too old to stomp. You know, I created a little bit of a monster here, you know, but I gotta they they expect me to go out there and stomp. So, <laughs> so right. for the first like he you know he was a bit winded, uh, you know, for the first uh, uh, first few shows till he got his sea legs under him, you know. Yeah. yeah. Well, and he was touring in his 70s. I mean, I'd be winded if I stomped here in the kitchen for one song. I'd be winded. Yeah. And I'm in my 50s. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for um, sure. Well, yeah. Speaking, and I, I, somebody wrote to me and said, Are you going to do anything about his more serious side? Because, you know, we've talked in the first couple of interviews, we talked a lot about Tom's funny side. And people know songs like Margot's Cargo and Big Joe Muffera and Bud the Spud and the Ketchup song. But he, he was really, he also was committed to, um, documenting history to creating mythology about Canadian yeah. history and stories and stuff. And those songs, like the one you and JP Cormier did, if people don't know it, check it out. Um, you, you did an album with JP Cormier called two and you did a song called songbird Valley, which is just gorgeous. Yeah. Oh, it's incredible. And, and it's a, a, a beautiful song about deforestation. And, um, you know, Tom yeah. was, yeah. And he was a folky, you know, too. Exactly. Right. And, yeah. So, well, would you like to sing? Sorry, sorry. Did I interrupt you? Oh no. There's just a. It's just because of the delay. But I uh, know. I think you're done, and I'm like, oh no. He just took a breath. I have to wait yeah. two seconds to know if you're done. But, um, I, could, but I could. I could sing. Bridge came tumbling down. If you like, or that would be wonderful. I didn't. I had asked you if you might do a Tom song. I didn't know what you'd pick, and I had already chosen that quote. And there it is. I mentioned bridge came tumbling down, and so yeah. it works out perfect. So and it's a good. Yeah. It's a good example of uh, his. Uh, historical you know archiving of, um yeah this is a true story it happened in in vancouver back i think in the late 50s a bunch of men were killed while building a bridge and i'll let you take it from there yeah it's powerful i'll do my best to sing it i've never sung this one um before so i'm just gonna read the read the words here um i it's one of my favorite tom songs and i i've always had it in mind to learn it so well here we go i'll learn it right now <laughs> Yeah. Nineteen scarlet roses The chaplain spread around In the waters of Burrard Inlet In old Vancouver town When the bridge came tumbling down When the bridge came tumbling down Nineteen men were drowned In June of 1958 In old Vancouver town there were 79 men working, 
build this brand new bridge to span the second narrows and connect up with the ridge till a big wind hit the bridge and the bridge came tumbling down and 19 men were drowned and the medical corps couldn't be too sure of the rest of the men they found in among the twisted girders one man realized how last night he'd been dreaming and saw before his eyes the big wind on the rise and the bridge came tumbling down and 19 steel men drowned and he saw the fright of the darkest night in old vancouver town with frogmen in the water by the cutting torches glow they fought to save the steel men from certain death below and pain we'll never know when the bridge came tumbling down and 19 men were drowned and 60 more that came ashore so thankful they were found well it often makes you wonder in strength who has the edge the longest steel beam structure that spans the highest ridge for the men that built the bridge and the bridge came tumbling down and 19 men were drowned but the other men came back again to lay the new beams down if you're ever crossing this mighty bridge sublime in 19 scarlet roses pass before your mind remember and be kind the bridge came tumbling down and 19 men were drowned so you could ride to the other side of old vancouver town so you could ride to the other side of old Vancouver town. Wow, that's so good. A friend of mine, Blaine Totten, just wrote, you just learned this now? Wow. <laughs> yeah, I'm a little, uh, uh, you know, I was reading reading the words and... Uh, yeah, yeah, I know it. On, oh. I I know it on the upright bass, but I didn't know if that would be as entertaining. Boom. boom <laughs> well, when you boom. were singing and I had you full screen, that's why I went back to this. I see the upright bass. Is that the one you bought to tour with Tom? Yeah, and it's signed by Tom. Uh, it says it's hard to see the writing. Um, I don't know if there's a way for me to to show that. There's oh, writing okay. on it says thanks, Dave, for the for the great bass plan tour 2002 stomping tom connors but it sort of faded wow. it was written with a sharpie on the oh, on the last okay. show uh the second last show actually I, I went into his motor room and i i i i brought my upright bass and and i threw it up in one of the beds and i handed him a sharpie and i said would you sign this for me and he says oh I, that's a beautiful bass i don't want to ruin that on you boy and i said well no you're not going to be ruined I want you to sign the bass, and he signed it. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's great. Yeah. Yeah, I think it might make it a tiny bit more valuable, maybe even, in Canada, for sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, you said you. I, I love your voice, and that that was such a great um, thing there, or such a great version of that song. I'm just gonna. I'm putting up your website just so people can see it. DaveGunning.com. Yeah. People, if you want to check it out, there. Dave's got a whole bunch of uh, like. There's CDs and stuff you can buy, and there's videos to watch. And honestly, uh, I, he's uh, exactly the Dave's exactly the kind of artist that Tom appreciated, and he's got a great voice and some amazing songs. So I hope you. I do hope you check him out. I'll put that up again in a little bit. But after this show, go check out DaveGunning.com. Somebody actually just wrote and said, asked me if I would post, I guess there's a video on Facebook of you and JP doing Ketchup Loves Potatoes in 2017 at the Stomp and Tom Center. Oh, yeah. He was like, share that on your page. Because yeah. anyway, I, and I will. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> you, you and JP are great. Yeah. I, I'm afraid I can't com respond to all the comments, but there are a ton of comments here saying fantastic and great job. And that's why we love Dave Gunning, just so you know. <laughs> well... <laughs> Um, so now I, I have to very quickly, not have to, I'm going to give away two copies of the book, of the book, and then I, and then I'm going to ask you a couple more questions. So really quickly, yeah. I do want to announce, I had a contest. I shared a video of you performing on my Facebook page and asked people to like yeah. and share. And then I did a random number generator and picked a winner and David Hillman won a copy of the book. And so I'm going to contact him and give that away. But now I've got two more books. So you guys get ready to type because you have to answer and whoever answers first is going to win a copy of the book. It can be signed or not signed, but if you want it signed, you got to wait a little while because I got to go to Halifax to the publishers and sign it. But okay, the first question, and these are pretty easy, so you just really have to be on the ball and a fast typist. Where was Stompin' Tom born? Whoever can type in first where Stompin' Tom was born, you get a copy of the book. And 
Okay. And then, uh, yeah, I've got another question. Just, just, we'll just wait. I'll just update these comments here for a second. Um, while we're doing that, Dave, um, you told me about, uh, someone wrote PEI. That's not quite right. Uh, St. John, New Brunswick. There we go. We have a winner. So John Arsenault, you want a copy of the book, but I know you already have it. So, <laughs> okay. I'm going to ask one more question. And then while I'm talking to you, Tom, I'm going to let them, or so while I'm talking to you, Dave, they can answer. Um, in the song, Bud the Spud, the Tom sings about ripping the tire off a highway. What's the name of that highway? What's that highway? So unfortunately, John R. Snow got St. John first. So he's ripping the tire off and there's a highway named. If you can name that, you get a copy of the book as well. Let's see if we had get a quick answer here. Um, now I'm getting lots of St. John, New Brunswick. So everybody know. I always thought Tom was born in PEI, but he was actually orphaned. There we go. Ma Mac Finney wrote the 401, tearing the, tar tar the, the line in the song. Yeah, the cops have been looking for the son of a gun that's been ripping the tire off the 401. So Mac Finney, I'll get in touch with you tomorrow and John about your book. So there you go. We gave away two copies of the book. Um, couple quick things. I, I could talk to you for, I'm supposed to keep this to 45 minutes, but um, one of the stories that I love that you told me was uh, when Tom said to you, how would you rate yourself? And that whole idea, his philosophy about the zero and stuff. Did, can you talk a little about that? or? Yeah, it's hard to explain it quickly, but... Um, we'll take uh, your time. Yeah, we don't have to stop. You know, I've got, I've got yeah, a little while. It's, it's, just... a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a weird one at first. Um, um, people are a little bit shocked by it. Well, I, I'll start by saying Tom, Tom was extremely intelligent. He, if you told him when you were born, he could tell you what day of the week you were born on very quickly. And uh, so he, he was able to do a lot of um, complicated math in his, uh, in his mind. And uh, he um, saw, he liked to read old texts, like whether it be the Bible or old, any old books he could find. And he saw when he, he started noticing patterns and, and for example, he said, you know, every single religion is, is, is from the same root and, but they don't know that, that it is. And people are taking things too literally. And, and he said, but it all comes from the same place because I, I'm finding all these patterns in, in all these different forms of religion that stem back to the same root. Um, but he had this. Uh, um, he saw. He's, he wasn't a numerologist. Like some people will say, "Oh, he was a numerologist." No, it wasn't that. He, he it was language. But he saw it as he assigned number values to it, and he he had this. Uh, like yeah. So it, it one, one night he said to me, "How would you rate yourself?" You know, you know, zero to to ten or something like that. And I think it's I don't know, maybe five. Like maybe I'm average. <laughs> He said, what if I told you you were zero? And uh, what if I told you that I'm a zero too? And what if I told you that we're all zeros? That we're all nothing? You know, and we're all the same. And uh, he just, his theory was, if you um, become, uh, if you become sort of in a in this state of mind where where you're 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 so humble and so open to all possibilities that you that the truth is easier to see um that you you keep the gates open for for positive whether it be positive energy to come into your life or whether it be information that's helpful or you know but just being totally open and totally neutral and yeah to try to remain in this believe all but believe nothing uh, type of frame of mind. And he said, we're all zeros. Um, and, you know, like if you're the ant on the center of the plate, you can see the outsides of the plate better. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta stay, stay in this state of mind. And he, he was just, it was just his, his beliefs or the way that he chose to live his life. Um, but it, it was something that he studied, uh, you know, he studied numbers and studied old things. I actually have have his it written here. These, this is his handwriting, and oh wow, he wrote that he wrote that chart for me one night in a motel room. So he he was uh, he he figured that the um, the human voice could make ten principal consonantal sound consonantal sounds. So he assigned number values to these sounds, 
and uh, started seeing patterns in, in language and 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 uh, he said it helped improve his ability to be able to learn things and and remember things and and yeah and it was quite quite complicated but but in a way it was he he was able to distill things down. Tom had a gift for being able to boil the pot of water until there was nothing left. He was able to distill things down to to whatever was like he right. and he had that gift well when you heard him speak queen you, you can see how he had that ability to just you he pulled you into every single word that he was saying and he, it was he distilled it right down to the truth yeah. and, and in such and, a beautiful way yeah and, and he that's did what that. comes across in his songs too yeah exactly and it, it was a complex simplicity somehow <laughs> you know <laughs> um but uh he he, I, when I said to him, I said, Tom, I, I mean, this this chart here, and I see how it works and all that, but how did you know to say, for example, that the S and the C and and the and the soft C sound and the Z z, 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 z would all be in assigned to value number two? Like, why? How come that didn't get assigned to value number four? Like, how did you know what to, which consonantal sounds to put in which? category and he said that's the party he, he said he was he was starving he was hitchhiking in the prairies and it was, it was a snowstorm and he said he hadn't eaten in three or four days and he was he he um he basically uh, he he said he at one point he, he he found himself in a ditch and just freezing and he thought he was going to die and he he was he he notices he's near a motel and he goes in to talk to the to the fellow in the motel, the desk clerk, and asks him for a a pencil, and he said he just wrote it down. He said he didn't he 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 don't, doesn't really understand how he thought of it. That was the mystery. Wow. But uh, and it's so bizarre. But he could he 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 could read. Um, um, it all sound it sounds. If I had more time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, and, and I Tom know. said like this may. And to, Tom said this may all be crazy uh you know he said but you know and maybe this is all maybe i'm just finding coincidences but dave i found thousands of coincidences and wow. he started giving me all these examples of of and he said it works better in german and french apparently he said other people help him with it and he said because those languages haven't been um sort of changed altered over the years as much as english and it has wow. and well so and I, 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 but anyway yeah. Yeah, no, it's fascinating. And the the whole zero thing, like at its essence is, you know, we're we're all equal, so we're all like balanced at zero. And he said something about sometimes you could be plus one or negative one, but your goal is to try to be at zero. So one oh one became a thing and it's actually yeah. on his tombstone, the numbers one oh one. It's not like a highway or anything. Um but yep. yeah, it's a it's a great now you actually sent me a picture. I'm gonna put I'm gonna make us a little smaller here. I could take us off camera, I guess. Um Maybe I'll do that. Anyway, I'll bring up the picture you sent to me of you with Tom's tombstone. Um, yeah. Where is it here? I, I've got it. Just one second. There it is. Um, yeah, that's you. And it, it says 101 on that maple leaf there. Yeah. It's you and Tom in profile. That's great. Now, you sent me you sent me another picture here, which I'm going to bring up, and you can tell us who, whose feet are we looking at here, Dave? <laughs> Uh, well, that's me and J.P. Cormier, oh. and that's at uh, Tom's funeral. Um, those those boots that we're looking at there are, I think it was called the square dance boots. That's the only, they're made by Boulet in Quebec. It's yeah. the only boots that Stomp and Tom would wear. Tom didn't wear the ones that go higher up. And if you look at Tom, like pictures of Stomp and Tom, you'd always see that there was one pant leg up on, on a boot kind of, oh, you know, okay, at yeah. random. He just let them fall wherever they fell, but... Those boots, they stopped making them years ago. And what's crazy is when we got to Gravenhurst, Ontario, there was an old tack shop there. And we went in there, and they had boule boots. And we said, we're like, this is crazy, but we're looking for these old square dance boots. And she said, oh, I've got some upstairs. And she f had boots that fit all of us. And we really? all bought those boots on the Stomp and Tom tour. And they had stopped making them. I don't know, a decade or, or more before before that. Oh, my God. That's amazing. Yeah, it was very that's, weird. 
<laughs> so now you have your own pair. So I, yeah. I do want to talk, if you don't mind, if we took, go a little bit longer, just you mentioned the memorial and you were at Tom's funeral and the memorial, but the funeral was quite, well, I, I don't know what you want to tell, but you called Lena to say you were sorry, Lena's Tom's widow, to say you were sorry he'd passed away. And that's when you found out that Tom had planned to have you at the memorial, right? Yeah, she. I, I just I called her, and when I found out, it was during the East Coast Music Awards in Halifax. I was on stage at the Carlton, and the audience was acting kind of strange. My manager, Shelley, followed me back to the green room. She gave me the news, and, and uh, I called Lena uh, and you know, just uh, expressed my condolences. And, uh, and she said, well, you and, you and JP are coming to the funeral, right, dear? And I said, I don't know. We hadn't discussed it or planned on it. She said, well, Tom planned on it. So uh, we want you to come, and and uh, we hope you can. And so JP and I went up together, and um, yeah, you actually performed at the memorial, right? You and JP together, yes. is that right? Or yeah, yeah. 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 Um, and then um, the... that was the at the Peterborough Arena. Yeah, I think eight thousand yeah. people or more showed up, and yeah. it, we were backstage uh, all with those black boots on there. And actually, that <laughs> that shot was from the actual funeral I reckon I think I recognized the carpet at the funeral home that was the first licensed funeral I had ever attended as well they were they had they were serving moosehead cold or warm at the, the funeral home <laughs> yeah. I found that so funny yeah. because I never heard that that it was a licensed funeral and you said that like, it was yeah. like the doors opened at three and the service didn't start till five and you guys all sat there drinking beer for a while right yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I remember seeing Adrian Clarkson, Adrian Clarkson drinking her bottle of Moosehead, and I, I went over and I said, "How you doing, eighty? I said to her, and she yeah. looked at me with tears in her eyes because that's what Tom used to call her. He used to call her eighty all the time. Oh, okay. And uh, so she she was touched by that, but uh, it, the yeah the funeral, and then we had a JP and I had a party in our our hotel room that night after the funeral, and um, with uh, just everybody that we could fit in our hotel room with the sandwiches and whatever from the f actual funeral. Then the next night was the memorial service at the Peterborough arena. And that was, uh, that was something else and very powerful. Yep. Wow. Yeah. You talk, I, I've seen you talk about it online and you, you and I have, have talked about it as well about, you know, when the coffin, the hearse backed in and how powerful it was. Yeah. Um, I could talk to you forever, but I, I've, I'm going to, cause I had 40,000, I sent you a list today. I think it was four pages long of things we might talk about, but one of the things I wanted to talk, just touch on briefly, cause I'd like, I'd love you to play another song is a lot of people, when I was interviewed on uh, live at five, for Live at Five yesterday, and they asked me, you know, why I think it's important that people remember Stomp and Tom, and he was writing Canadian songs before people did that. Like a lot, most Canadians wrote songs. They either went to the states or they wrote songs about England or they wrote songs about the states. And Tom was unabashedly Canadian. And because of him, there's a whole new generation. I don't know if it's totally because of him, but certainly I think he had an influence. I know the Dave Bedini of the Rio Statics said he became hooked on Stomp and Tom and realized he could write songs about Canada. And so back around 1990, he wrote a song called Saskatchewan. And then Gord Downey of the Tragically Hip was a fan of the Rio Statics and went, they wrote a song about Saskatchewan. I can do that too. And now here we are 30 years later. Does it even dawn on you that you couldn't write a song about Nova Scotia? If you, Cause I know you do, but is it just part of the makeup as a younger musician nowadays that you can do what you want? Yeah. Well, I mean, Tom obviously dedicated his entire career to that purpose. He, he just, he wrote about this, this country and, and, um, uh, gave people a sense of pride, you know, where they are from, and truly, you know, knew the country because he traveled it, you know, from coast to coast, hitchhiking and living in different places, and and uh, yeah, just uh, I like I sort of sometimes I get overwhelmed by the fact that I had the opportunity to to work with him and and get to know him. Um, it's uh, it's pretty amazing uh, looking back and. and and uh it, yeah it's just yeah. uh it's it's like wow i, I got to do that yeah. yeah it's not something i take for granted yeah it's funny duncan fremlin said to me it's like getting to play hockey with gretzky getting to be on stage with tom, stomp and tom yeah yeah absolutely uh, and yeah. speaking of hockey tom of course is famous for the hockey song but you've written your own hockey yeah. song which it won the cbc what was it called here i've got the name the cbc hockey night in canada song quest it's a great song yeah. called a game going on that you wrote with dave francie and so yeah we we um we wrote the song uh the two of us yeah and 
certainly not trying to compete with with uh, Stomp and Tom's, you know, again, uh, the hockey song because that's probably the greatest one that will ever be written. But uh, but um, yeah, and this song was submitted by um, by a friend uh, into the the contest, and because neither uh, David Francie or I had any interest in in submitting the song. Oh, really? Might have a oh, buzzy that's guitar wonderful. here. <laughs> that's great that you didn't even know it was being submitted and you ended up winning. I just want to tell you, we have so many comments and I am going to go back and look at them all. And people are saying, you know, great interview and nice things about you. My sister Michelle is a big fan of yours and she just commented, I love Dave Gunning. I saw him many times in concert. She used to date a guy from Pictou County. Anyway, uh, so oh. shout out to my sister just because she's a big fan. And <laughs> But I will look at all. I appreciate all the comments. It's wonderful. And I'm going to let you do a game going on when you're ready there, Dave. Yeah, I apologize for all the string buzzing. I had, oh, hadn't no. really... Uh, and then this we'll guitar was... My my son, Judd, is uh, is playing the guitar. He's he's quite good. And uh, he, he just... He plays the he plays the arse right off them. Like, you know, <laughs> pick them up and the strings are shot. <laughs> you know, it's like, but, I mean, that's what they're made for. But uh, it's like, I never know what I'm going to what I'm going to get when I pick up a guitar around here anymore. Lucky there's even <laughs> strings still on the thing. <laughs> That's funny. That'll be okay. okay. A little string string buzzing will make it You're a little authentic here. So, well, here's... You the, sound uh, great. I just want, I want people to hear one of your songs. So here we go. hockey on TV it's Saturday night at the rink across the road they play under the lights come winter time it's the game that we love and I just play for fun but there's hockey in my blood down to the rink to the pond to the river there's a game going on going on forever With shovels in hand, we come from all around On a bright windless day when the snow stops coming down Let's all meet by the lake at the end of the town Where the anthem that's played is that shovel scraping sound Down to the rink, to the pond, to the river There's a game going on, going on forever down to the rink, to the pond, to the river There's a game going on, going on forever And whoever shows up, that's who gets to play Let's divvy them up in the usual way All sticks in the middle and each one to an end To get a goal, shoot the puck between the frozen boots Let this game begin Yellow grass, the bull rush defenseman is in the way of the pass. Some hardly skate, some skate just like the wind. Let's play until it's dark, until we have to go back in. Here we go! Down to the rink, to the pond, to the river. There's a game going on, going on forever. Down to the rink, to the pond, to the river. There's a game going on, going on forever Down to the rink, to the pond, to the river There's a game going on, going on forever Down to the rink, to the pond, to the river There's a game going on, going on and on and on forever There's hockey on TV it's Saturday night.
so great. Thank you so much. What a what, what a wonderful performance, Dave. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Well, <laughs> we know, and without stomping Tom Connors, that song may not exist. Who knows? You know. Exactly. I remember yeah. when you won. You actually there was an interview, and you said, "I think Tom might have been proud of it." So it's you know, I bet he would have been. So you're getting just so you know. Um, I'm going to put up a couple compliments for you. You sure can write a song, Dave. Um, and wow, and yes, and applaud or great song, Dave and lots of applause and fantastic and oh, <laughs> great song so many back... nice things <laughs> yeah brings back childhood wow. memories someone said so i hope people will check out if they i mean if they don't already have your music please check dave out um artists aren't getting to perform these days because of covid so basically you kind of get to sell some music and do some stuff online so please check out dave online yep. For sure. Um, it has been so great chatting with you. Thank you so much. Um, I, like I said, I could have yeah. gone on longer, but this is, uh, I, my publisher tells me to try to keep these to 45 minutes. I haven't done it yet, but <laughs> <laughs> it, it, yeah, you're, no, you're... thanks for doing this and for writing the book. And yeah, this is, I, this is beautiful what you're doing. I, I, celebrate it i think it's amazing uh, oh well thank you and i i appreciate you you taking part in the interview you gave me for the book gave me some wonderful insights into tom um which we didn't even get to get to all of that so maybe people want to go buy the book yeah. there I, i'm supposed to plug the book that's yep. what i'm supposed to do but anyway i do want to say yeah. i'm just gonna do i'm gonna let you go here in a second um but i, I your latest album i'm gonna bring that up on the screen here your latest album yep. is called up against the sky there it is there again i could turn our cameras off but it's too much work so that's dave's latest album and you can find that again if you go to his website you'll see information about that and I've, i was listening to it all day today and there's some great songs on there um before we leave i want to thank danielle and rebecca and kara and jim at formac publishing i want to thank arts nova scotia for making this possible anthem entertainment they own the rights to all of tom's music and uh yeah i want to thank uh, dave for for being here with us tonight next week i have al widmeyer do you know al have you met al I, I I know I know of him. Yeah, yeah. I that that'll be a fun interview to watch. That that one. Yeah. Yeah. He he toured with Tom for a number of years as well. I think he might have taken part in the memorial yeah. service. I think he was one of the players there. Yeah, he did. So yeah. he's so he's yeah, going to be he, with me next week. Saw the guy. <laughs> he, yeah, he was at the hotel room party. <laughs> oh, he was. He was there, was he? <laughs> anyway, yeah, he's got some great think, stories. Yeah, I may for sure. Yeah, he was. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. Well, I may bring a couple other guests in that week, too. Um, so we're going to wrap up. I'm going to yep. post, just let people know where they can buy my book. And then, Dave, if you can hang on, I'm going to end the broadcast and you and I can just say goodnight after that, if you don't mind. But thank you sure, so yeah. much for thanks being with every... me. Yeah, thanks, this Charlie. Is... And thanks, everybody, You're... for the amazing comments. I feel like you and I are going to live longer now, all this positive energy coming through the, i know here. exactly i'm soaking it up yeah. <laughs> we don't get yeah. it as performers you don't get a lot of it these days so in, anyway thanks yeah. you're wonderful yeah. i'm just gonna thanks. wrap up here thanks dave um, okay, so I just want to say if anyone's looking to buy the book, um, you can actually, it, it's actually sold out online right now at Chapters and Amazon, but it's available in stores. I know there's COVID out there, so only if you can get to a store safely. Um, it, it's at Chapters and Cole, Coles and Indigo across the country. It's also at independent booksellers. If you've got a little bookseller in your town, um, you can ask them to bring the book in. And you can find it online as well at, um, if you actually go to my publisher, formac.ca you can get it from them if you want to buy it online so i'm supposed to say all that stuff and we'll get rid of that now but there you go if you're looking to buy the book it makes a great christmas gift that's all i'll say about that and uh, thank you so much for uh, hanging out with us tonight i appreciate all the comments i'm going to go through them later and look at them all i'm sorry we couldn't respond to all of them but i was trying to keep it to an hour and uh, well i was trying for 45 minutes let's be honest but i knew there's so many more th i could have had another whole show with dave he's such a great storyteller so thanks for tuning in tonight everybody and i'll see you next thursday night when i have al widmeyer who was a band member of tom's he has some great stories and i may have a couple other guests as well we're looking at expanding next week and try to keep it to 45 minutes good night everybody thanks <laughs>